Hello and indeed welcome to another whiskey review with me the whiskey novice thank you for joining me for review number 122 part 5 of this series Baker's Dozen part 2 looking at 13 12 year old Scottish single malts and this time it is the turn of this one call it the beast of Dufton call it the wee witchy I would say indeed if it was your inclination to do so you could call it Susan and not upset too many people but for the purposes of this series we shall call it Mortlach 12 why not uh, a Diageo malt there from Speyside, indeed. Uh, this one uh, was presented as part of their new range in 2018. Uh, Diageo, as I said, it's, it's bottled at 43.4%. I don't see any, it's, when I when I see Diageo, I generally take it for granted down in this entry range level, you're, it's it's chill filtered, there's colour at it, and I don't see anything here to tell me any different. It's matured in ex-sherry and ex-bourbon casks, and this involves, it's, well it's not a complete mystery, this 2.81 distillation. Uh, yeah, it's... And there, there's stills in Mortlach are uh, different shapes. There's nothing, they don't really tend to pair the stills. So there's different shapes, and the smallest of which being the Wee Witchy, which is where this gets its name. And I think it is quite important in that 2.81 distillation. What I will do, rather than trying to explain it to you, because I'm not quite sure myself, I, I have read it, I have tried to break it down. But what I will do is throw a link into the description below for a good site, which I found, a good web page, which I found described it pretty well, but it was still still quite difficult to understand. They then use uh, a worm tub. They're one of the only, I think, some of like 14 distilleries still in Scotland using a worm tub for condens uh, condensing. So, you know, that then will come into play here as well. So there you go. And if nothing else, a rather stunning bottle. I think, uh, I do think, it's weird actually for Diageo because they, they tend to stick to that quite a, a, a simple round ball generally. This one stands out for me anyway. So let's get in, shall we? Oily, dirty, nosing, which I would expect, why would I expect it? Well, as I did say, there's a worm tub used for condensing. Generally, you find worm tub condensing tends to make for an oilier, thicker, more viscous whiskey spirit, even, and uh, and yet again, I think if you read into that two point eight one distillation, I think actually viscosity is something that plays a big part in the the distillation of Mortlach alone. So you're already making generally whenever you get to uh, when you're looking at three times distilled, you're looking at a lighter spirit. But I think in Mortlach, it, it, they tend to try to even steer away from that a wee bit. They've tuned to this 2.81, and then in the use of your worm tub, you get this viscous spirit. Just quite a, a floral note of it at first. Like rose or carnation, something there that it, it's a, a fresh flower. And I got one for me, and yet again, I think it was that floral thing that maybe made me feel it a wee bit, was a Lemon Turkish Delight. Because there is a, there's a citrus note, yes, definitely. But I think it's that citrus note and floral note. And there's also like a powdery, lightly powdered sugar note. So I'm thinking Lemon Turkish Delight. Yeah, that, that, that wee powdery sugar dryness is, is there. Nice, sweet, just brings a sweetness to it, along with the citrus, along with the floral note. So it all works very well together. It's, it becomes a, a little sharp, not a lot, a little sharp. It's quite round, it's being quite viscous. It comes a little sharp and the, and the oak starts to play then. It's, it's like an oak sawdust. And there's even a whiff of that sherry influence. It just feels very well balanced once again. It feels like as if the, the, the cask maturation has balanced a good spirit well. I'm 
Yeah, that's, oh yeah, that's thick. Sweet, sour, slightly savoury delivery once again. From that nose, from the worm tub, I would almost expect a slight savoury note in there, and it is there. Malty, it's oaky. It's round but lightly peppery. And then the sherry obviously starts to come into play for me because it's all about the deep dark fruit notes then. There's a richness once again it's all about that coating, but the, it's not just coating, it's flavour. And now I'm starting to get that lovely warming. Yet again, not hot, but just a nice warming at the, at the back of the palate. The ex bourbon and ex sherry are so well balanced. Both are playing their part, but neither wants to take a lead. Yeah, very nice. I think, I think a lot of this, what what's actually making this for me is a lot of it's that mouthfeel. It is so thick and coating and oily, but yet you're left with a clean, fresh, slightly minty finish very much so yeah that's a lovely clean fresh even hints of fresh linen on that finish and definitely mint yeah very nice this is actually even better than I remember it when I was doing my tasting notes 43.4%. They've obviously they've brought it down to a, a tuned 43.4 is a bit of a strange number. But that's what they've brought it down to. But they haven't taken anything, they haven't stripped for me, they haven't stripped a whole lot away from it. Yes, if it is, well, yes, I imagine it. Well, yes, chill filtered. Yes, there's colour added, but this is an example where for me, you don't feel it. it. It doesn't feel like as if it has lost a lot. Interesting then to look at maybe an independent bottling of this. Surely, you know, if you get something that's very, very natural here, it, it could be quite incredible. The nose doesn't change a whole lot with the addition of a drop of water. Slightly creamier, slightly more citrusy, slightly less oaky. Hmm. Palette much creamier. Yeah. Much creamier. Much livelier. More of that oak and play. Some orange now. A, a very good experience all round. Finish. I think I preferred the finish without water, would you believe? I think the finish was cleaner without water, strangely. But all in all, a good one for me. I, I've said it before, Diageo sometimes take a bit of a running from the, from the whiskey heads, the big fans. I don't know. Sometimes I think they, they they very much get it right. And I think this is a prime example of a whiskey that they very much got right. So uh, I haven't got a whole lot more to say to about it. What I will say is definitely check out that web page that I've left a link for and, and, <laughs> and see if you can figure your way around this 2.81 distillation. It, it obviously works for Mortlach. I'm not going to debate that one. As a whiskey, it comes in around 40 to 45 pounds. For a 12 year old, 
I said, that's not really stretching it, is it? I've said it before, I think the bottle's a thing of beauty. I know it's only a vessel. I know it's only, you know, it's only something to carry the whiskey in. The whiskey, the whiskey itself still has to be worth it. I think this is. I, I do. I think it is. So we'll leave it and move on. Yes, if you enjoy Mortlach 12 year old, I actually didn't find this that hard to uh, think of another, if you like this, then try this, because it was the feel of this. It was the feel of this. And I'm going to recommend to you this, Grigalaki 17. Now, in my, pardon me, in my review of this, I, I, I did like it, and I do like it. I just think it's a bit overpriced. But it's all very natural. It's all very tasty. It's, you know, so it, it's, look, this is a good whiskey. I just think it's a little overpriced as compared to the 13-year-old Craig Elligy. I think that was my beef at the time, but still a great whiskey. And very much, yet again, that worm tub feel, you get that lovely, thick, oily, creamy, mouthfeel and it just plays very very well another great whiskey so if you like Mortlach 12 i'm going to recommend the craig Allegate 17 year old yes yes this i would recommend and even sitting in the glass there that orange is starting to come out even more the oakiness is actually coming back into the palate as a dusty sawdust, I said earlier about it being in the nose, that's starting to come to life in the palate. I could quite happily stand here and drink this all day long. Quite happily indeed. But I won't because of other things to do. So I'll leave it at that. Say thank you very much for joining me once again. Thank you very much to my patrons. If you should wish to join that group, the details are below along with that description of 2.81 distillation. Till the next time, my friends, here's to your good health. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please click and subscribe to be notified of further content.